zeal, drive, desire to do the one's best, to get to the top. Are you ambitious? I, I think I'm ambitious, yes. Why do you say that? Um, well, I'm driven. I'm not quite sure I'm driving, but, uh, but I want to do better. So I sort of think of ambition as trying to exceed an expectation. And have you always been like this? I think so. Okay. I, I mean, I think, uh, but probably not really realizing it. I mean, just maybe ambition is something that one can reflect upon, but I was a young ski racer, always competitive ski racer. I was on the New Zealand ski team. One of the youngest members, 15 and then skied European Cup circuit. Uh, broke my back in a downhill in Switzerland. Spent three months in hospital. Um, and that you normally would think that would be the end of it. But uh, four years later, I was asked to present the National Ski Cup. And I thought, I'm not an old lady. And uh, ended up racing and um, had the fastest run for the first run of the giant slalom and was runner-up in the national champs. And uh, so I, so I don't know if that's ambitious, but that's just a drive to prove to who knows who that um, that story isn't the story. Certainly the people that you've been speaking to, I think Helen Clark is probably, you know, an incredible model of someone that's that's really made it to the very top. And coming from a farm, one of four girls, um, that, you know, she's, she just pushed through. I think my parents are extremely ambitious. My father was a Holocaust survivor in Amsterdam. His, he was separated from his mother, father, and brother seven-year-old brother when he was about 12. They were taken to a, a place in the country in Driebeck in Holland and he stayed with neighbors in Amsterdam, much like Anne Frank. They were discovered and, and, and died in Auschwitz and he was orphaned at the age of 16. So essentially he didn't have a family, he didn't have a home and he didn't have a secondary school education. And yet, by the time he came to New Zealand, he went on a trip around the world and arrived in New Zealand with four pounds in his pocket. Um, he was introduced to a German baker, Dr. Reisenstein, who was also working as a librarian. And, you know, loved New Zealand, but didn't like the white bread, the one that took top bread, and started making German breads. And my father ended up being his driver, delivery boy. And, uh, wanted a loaf of bread sculpted on that truck. So he heard about a Dutch sculptor, Peter Zauerbeer. My mother, who's Dutch, was visiting her cousin, married to the sculptor. My parents met. But they together built a very successful bakery, which was Vogel's Bread, ultimately. And, you know, is that successful? Is that driven? Is that purely passionate about making great bread? Is that a, a, just a, you know, raw ambition to, to make it? Going back to New Zealand now where they see all these incredible entrepreneurial, you know, whether it's from the food side, you know, from the restaurants, cafes, to little, you know, espresso bars in the middle of nowhere, to then really hearing about all these companies like Zero and on and on, so looking at technology. And I think you know, what what New Zealand is, is isolated, but mm. because of technology, there's this great ability not to be isolated. And so I think it's that sort of drive and ambition, innate ambition from New Zealand not to be isolated.